Welcome to Soul Meds 2. This is the last of the series, and maybe there will be a closing one. And this is Y and Z. Y and Z are kind of hard to find as animals. Zebra is really not in the Bible. So Z is kind of hard. And Y. Now we have lots of other animals in English that would start with Y and Z. But this is about what you find in Scripture. And so we have come to the end. Y and Z. But I think they are like wise men. The wise men. So play, with, play along with me on this one. The thought for today. Animals are great things. They are created by God for His glory. I am given the power to rule over them, but not other people. I need to take this responsibility seriously. To take it too lightly makes my life harder and full of stress. To give God control of my life makes it easy and light. Some really good thoughts in there. Controlling animals, but not controlling people. Now that's a thought, isn't it? We want to go to Ecclesiastes and most of the time you don't find people going to Ecclesiastes. The Song of Solomon, the Romantic Book, and Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, they're full of great ideas, but people don't spend a lot of time reading them. We want to look in chapter 7, verses 19 to 24. Only, only five verses, so very short today. But Read along with me in your scripture, in your Bible, if you open it and read or listen while I read. Wisdom makes one wise person more powerful than two rulers in a city. It is true that there isn't anyone on earth who does only what is right and never sins. Don't pay attention to everything people say. If you do, you might hear your servant cursing you. Many times you yourself have cursed others. Deep down inside, you know that's true. I used wisdom to test all these things I said. I made up my mind to be wise, but it was more than I could accomplish. Whatever exists is far away and very deep. Who can find it? Now that is not a word in any language, Y-Z. Maybe the pronunciation, wise. And it is not an animal either, but it fits the end of the alphabet. Through the alphabet, we have seen ourselves in every animal. The character, the strengths, the weaknesses. God made the animals, and he made us. You and me. But he made us in his own image. That's where we are different than animals. In the New Testament, we find wise men. They were educated, academic, trying to find the truth. A star caught their curiosity. Then there were the wise men of Egypt. Powerful and magical, Moses and his God proved to be better. There were the wise men of Babylon, whom Daniel had to face. The ones who tried to have him and his friends killed. And when Jesus was here, many people thought he was strange. He had disobeyed his parents at age 12 and done, not, done things against the culture that he knew. He was a wise man. He was different, choosing only 12 guys, not the crowds others would have. He ate with sinful people. He threw people out of church. So there are many wise men, but the question why, why is the letter, is always there. Why did you do what he did? Why did Jesus do what he did? Why didn't he escape and be the king? 
when he was already the king of kings? The question why is what we all ask. Children never seem to stop asking it. And nor should we, even as grown-ups. Now some of us are children. Some of us are children because of our age, and others are children in our spiritual life. It is nice to be a child. Better to be wise. Wise is maturity. The wisdom of maturity to obey when we can't see the future. Wisdom to tell what is right from wrong. Some of us would like God to give us the choice Solomon had. Choosing wisdom over many other things he could have chosen made him the wisest man on earth. The road to be wise can be hard. You can experience failure and depression. Look at Christ. His chosen disciples left him. He felt like God had taken away all his energy. He was tempted to disobey, but he showed his wisdom by obeying God, his Father. Today we can review the animals and see how wise they are, because God made them. Today we can look at ourselves and see how childish we are. Today we can see that having the faith of a child is good, but having the attitude of a wise person is maybe better. If we are not wise, we know that God is all wise. When we are like a child, we can depend on His wisdom and obey. If we are not wise, we know that God is all wise. And when we are like a child, we can depend on His wisdom and obey. If we are childish, we depend on our wisdom and become frightened. When you pray, ask for His wisdom, not yours. When there are tough times, low grades, disappointment, we know that God's wisdom comes from maturity and maturity comes from trials. Are you a wise child of God or just childish? Which is really a really good question because so many like to think they are wise and mature when really their reactions and actions demonstrate that they are really childish, selfish, self-oriented, and that's not mature spiritually. We are sometimes older, but it doesn't make us wiser. For the prayer. Dear God, I want to be wise, but am so dumb. I am selfish and proud. Animals seem to be so wise. Make me a wise child of the King of Kings. A child that is free from slavery to my sin. A child who brings glory to their Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. For reflection, how wise are you? Now, that can be kind of, how do you define wise? I'll let you do that. How wise are you? Explain why you think you are wise. Or why you think you're foolish, which is the opposite. How often do you ask God why? And if you don't, I do a lot. I ask God why, and you don't have to be a child to ask why. How much wiser would I be if I depended on God more? If wisdom comes from God, we can be wiser and we can be more mature in our spiritual life, if we depend maybe more on Him. What do you think? Am I childish or just childlike? And sometimes we kind of play with those two words. Childlike is to be like a child. But childish is just never growing up. 
very different ide ideas about ideas of childish and childlike. So write down which one you are like and why. It's a good exercise to end this book. In the final letter, which is the last page, what insights have you gained? Really good questions. You've had 25 uh, readings, videos, perhaps a better understanding of self and a closer relationship with God. And that's my hope and prayer when I made this book. Perhaps you found answers to questions that are very old. And that would be even better. I, I, that would be really great. God is more than just great. He's more than just good. He's more than just a buddy. He is interested in a dynamic relationship to blow you away. He wants to give you a life free of slavery to things. Free to have peace inside, power outside, and confidence in your direction. Will you take this free gift? The gift of salvation, that's the starting point. And when you go through that door, many things open up. And you let Him reset your life today. Salvation is the beginning. But many people, they get saved, but they don't allow God to, or Jesus to reset their life. It just moves forward. When we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, so many things move forward. Think on these things to live forever. I'm Pastor Paul Friesen, writer of the book, teacher and mentor. May you have an increased confidence in our Lord.